father was really bad. Like, really bad. And they said, you know, these are great people in North Carolina. They won't mind. No, but they said, they won't mind, sir, if you cancel and made it another time. And I said, what? And they said, we have a big crowd, but they won't mind just because the weather was so terrible. So, I said, you gotta be kidding. So we've been driving for two hours. We landed it like a long way, but there was no way that we weren't showing up tonight. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. We, we couldn't land at your local airport. We landed, we landed a long way away. I said, what? Let's put it this way. The drive was about three times longer than the flight. But we made it. That's all that matters, right? We made it. And I'm here today for one main reason, to thank you, the people of North Carolina, for being so incredible. We want to thank you. You went out and pounded the pavement, you organized your fellow citizens, and propelled to victory a grassroots movement, the likes of which nobody, nobody, has ever seen before, and that's beyond our country. And I want to give a special thank you to the incredible military families, service members, and veterans of North Carolina. And they were great. You saw what happened with the military. I got such numbers. Oh, those numbers are good. I won't talk about it. We don't talk about numbers, we bring people together, but boy, were those numbers good. And our veterans, do we love our veterans? We love them. Your state's legacy of service is an inspiration to us all. North Carolina has produced many of the finest soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines the world has ever seen. represent the absolute best of us. We must follow their example, working in unison toward a shared goal across every social, racial, and economic line. They understand that to accomplish the mission, we must all be pulling in the same direction. We have to get together. that we must leave no man or woman behind. These patriots have shed their blood to defend our country in distant fields of battle across the earth. Our debt to them is eternal and everlasting. Amazing. Amazing. And you know, we have a very special person here today. Who are going to introduce? We salute their sacrifice and we salute the flag they fought to protect. We love our flag, right? We love our flag. And we don't like it when we see people ripping up our flag and burning our flag. We'll see what we're going to do about that, okay? Tomorrow is the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. It's a milestone that marks the ultimate sacrifice of those who wear the great uniform. It's a reminder, too, of the valiant efforts of America's fighting men and women who have liberated millions from tyranny and oppression. Now today, our brave men and women are the first in line defense, defense against radical Islamic terrorism, words that some people don't like to say, an ideology of death that slaughters innocent men, women, and children. We're going to protect our people, we're going to protect our country, believe me. A new 
threat to freedom of us. And just as we defeated these threats, we faced generations in the past, and you understand that, so too will we defeat the forces of terror. We stand here today it's just miles from Fort Bragg, the home of heroes. Our special forces at Fort Bragg have been the tip of the spear in fighting terrorism. The motto of our Army Special Forces is to free the oppressed. And that is exactly what they have been doing and will continue to do. At this very moment, soldiers from Fort Bragg are deployed in 90 countries around the world. Can you believe that? 90 countries. Based in Fort Bragg is the 82nd Airborne Division. the All-American Division. We stand in awe of their achievements. We really do. Not far from here sits 45% of the entire United States Marine Corps at Camp Lejeune. I've been to Camp Lejeune. We love Camp Lejeune. 12,000 citizen soldiers fill the ranks of the North Carolina Army and Air National Guard. The National Guard rushed to the scene to help the victims of Hurricane Matthew and so many other catastrophes. And we continue to send our thoughts and prayers to those recovering in its wake. The military families in North Carolina are a national treasure and it will be the duty of my administration to ensure that we protect those who protect us. taking care of our veterans. And I'm right now, I'm right now working. These are great, great people. And they haven't been treated fairly. And I'm right now working on picking the people that are going to be helping our veterans. And they are really outstanding. We have some of the great people. And a lot of people that are giving, making great sacrifices to do this. But they're going to be unbelievable. You're going to see such a change. You're going to see such a change like you've never seen before. We're going to protect and help our veterans. Believe me. That brings me to the second reason that I'm here. To discuss our action plan to make America great again. Beginning with the rebuilding of our military. And we will. We will. You're going to see it. I'm so looking forward probably next week. You're going to see what we're going to do to take care of our vets. It's going to be announced. A lot of things are going to be announced. Stay tuned, folks. Here are the priorities that will guide our military and veterans policy. All men and women in uniform will have the supplies, support, equipment, training, services, medical care, and resources they need to see what we're going to do done incredibly well and perfectly. care in the world for our veterans, both at public and VA facilities, as well as the right to see a private doctor when the lines are long. I've been saying this for the last year and a half. Incredibly well. You know, people are waiting in line for seven days, eight days, nine days. Longer. He just said longer. Longer than that. And when that happens, you want to well see a private doctor, see a private doctor when the lines are long. I've been saying this for the last year and a half. You know, people are waiting in line for seven days, eight days, nine days. Longer. He just said longer. Longer than that. And when that happens, you're going out to see a private doctor, a private hospital, a public hospital, somebody that can take care of you, and we're going to pick up the bill. And it's going to be, not only is it going to be great for you and life-saving in many cases, it's going to be less expensive. And I'm saying, why didn't they do this in the past? Why didn't somebody do that? There's not going to be any more waiting for our great people online for 
weeks to see a doctor. And finally, a commitment to only engage the use of military forces when it's in the vital national security interests of the United States. We don't want to have a depleted military because we're all over the place fighting in areas that just we shouldn't be fighting in. We're going to have such a strong, powerful military. It's not going to be depleted any longer. I mentioned equipment previously, and I said equipment. We're going to have the finest equipment in the world. It's going to be new. It's going to be modern. It's going to be clean. It's going to be the best. That's all we're going to have. We're not going to be a depleted military anymore. From now on, it's going to be America first. America first. We will stop racing to topple foreign and and you understand this foreign regimes that we know nothing about that we shouldn't be involved with. Instead, our focus must be on defeating terrorism and destroying ISIS. that shares these goals will be our partner in this mission. We won't forget it. We want to strengthen all friendships and seek out new friendships. Rather than a rigid dogma, we're guided by the lessons of history and a desire to promote stability, stability all over, and strength in our land. This destructive cycle of intervention and chaos must finally, folks, come to an end. Yeah. We've spent, at last count, six trillion dollars in the Middle East. And our roads have potholes all over. Our highways are falling apart. Our bridges are falling. Our tunnels are no good, our airports are horrible like third world countries. We've got to start spending on ourselves. But we've got to be so strong militarily like we've never ever been before. Remember that. Like we've never been before. We see harmony and goodwill among the nations of the world. And we believe that respect for mutual sovereignty helps form the basis of trust and understanding, but we don't want people taking advantage of us anymore. We don't want countries taking advantage of us anymore. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want to be the smart people. We don't want to be what we've been over the last long period of time. We build up our military not as an act of aggression, but as an act of prevention. We pursue and build up arms, not in order to seek conflict, but in order to avoid conflict. We want to be strong. In short, we seek peace through strength. That is why in my first budget report to Congress, I am going to ask for the elimination of the defense sequester. So now, Depletion, I call it depletion. It gets worse and worse every year, not for our military. We will show the world that America is going to be strong again, stronger than ever before. We're going to be stronger militarily than ever before. And hopefully we don't have to use our military. But we're going to be stronger than ever before. And there's rarely been a time when we've needed the strength more than we have right now. But in order to succeed with our defense policy, we must find the right person to lead our defense department. Is that right? This is why I'm proud to formally announce today my intention to nominate General James Jim is a Marine Corps 
four-star general, the former commander of U.S. Central Command and NATO's Supreme Allied Commander. For transformation, this is going to be so great for us. He led an assault battalion in Operation Desert Strong, and you saw what that happened. What happened? That was the way you're supposed to lead it. There was no games. Men don't play no games, right? Led the forces that went after the Taliban and commanded the first Marine Division in Iraq. He is one of the most effective generals that we've had in many, many decades. An extraordinary leader of our time who has committed his life to his love for our country. General Mattis is the living embodiment of the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. And the American people are fortunate that a man of this character and integrity will now be the civilian leader atop the Department of Defense. Under his leadership, right? Under his leadership, such an important position. We will rebuild our military and alliances, destroy terrorists, face our enemies head on, and make America is safe again. It is now my honor and privilege to welcome to the stage your next Secretary of Defense, General Mad Dog Mattis. Thank you. shown in me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to return to our troops, our families, the civilians of the Department of Defense, because I know how committed they are and devoted they are to the defense of our country, the defense of our Constitution. And with our allies strengthened, with our country strengthened, I look forward to being the civilian leader so long as the Congress gives me the waiver and the Senate votes to consent. Thank you very much. What a great guy. He's going to be incredible. He'll get that waiver, right? He's going to get that. Oh. If he didn't get that waiver, there'd be a lot of angry people. Such a popular choice. I believe we're in the process of putting together one of the all-time great cabinets that has ever been assembled in our nation's history. We have some great, great people going to be named over the next couple of days. Too. But to accomplish our goals, we must reject the failed approaches of the past. We must move past the tired, conventional thinking of Washington, D.C. As Abraham Lincoln said, as our case is new, so must we think anew and act anew. My plan begins with bold structural reform to create millions of good-paying jobs and even great-paying jobs. You've been seeing what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. And we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't. We were very proud of saving 1,100 jobs in Indiana with the help of Mike Pence, Vice President-elect, who's incredible. We're very proud of Mike Pence, by the way. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, we want the next generation of innovation and production to happen right here in America and right here in North Carolina. And don't forget, when we started, even four weeks before, they said, well, we're going to have an awfully hard time winning Florida, an awfully hard time winning North Carolina. We're not going to win Pennsylvania. We're not going to win Michigan. We're not going to win Wisconsin. We're not going to win... 
We're not going to win Iowa. And Ohio's going to be tough. So it started out. We won Ohio by more than eight points. We won Iowa by a massive number, 10 points. Then we went down and we won Florida. Remember that fantastic evening? We have breaking news. Donald Trump wins Florida. Donald Trump wins North Carolina. We won so many states. We won 30 states, 32 states. We won so much, and we just kept winning, and then we topped it off by winning Pennsylvania, winning Michigan, winning, right? Winning Wisconsin, states that hadn't been won in 38 years, a lot of states. And it was a fantastic evening, and that's why we're here tonight, because we want to thank you. We want to thank you, especially. First on taxes. We're going to undertake one of the great tax reforms and simplifications in American history. This includes lowering the tax rate on business from 35% all the way down to 15%. And massive tax cuts, by the way, for middle class workers. Massive. The biggest. Biggest since Reagan, actually bigger than Reagan. On regulations, we're going to eliminate every single wasteful regulation that undermines the ability of our workers and our companies to compete. The regulation business is a disaster in our country. We're going to get rid of all of the unnecessary regulations. On energy, we will cancel the job-killing restrictions on the production of American energy and pursue American energy independence. And we'll be able to do it. Honoring the legacy of Theodore Roosevelt, believe it or not, one of our great environmentalists, we will also conserve and protect our beautiful natural resources for the next generation, including protecting lands and anglers and hunters and all of those who enjoy the outdoors, like my sons, Don and Eric. They enjoy the outdoors. They enjoy it. They love it. On infrastructure, I will ask Congress to pass legislation that produces one trillion dollars of new investments in America's crumbling infrastructure, including major projects in our inner cities. We're going to take care of our inner cities. We're going to get the inner cities going again. Remember I used the expression, what the hell do you have to lose? I'm telling you, you're going to see. And I want to thank, we, had, we did so well, so much better with African American communities, with Hispanic communities than anybody ever anticipated. So much better. Better than has taken place in years back, in years back. So I want to thank the African American communities. I want to thank the Hispanic communities. And we're starting to work already. We're working already. And the appointment today of Ben Carson has been very popular, very well received. Dr. Ben Carson. Good guy. Great guy. We will have two simple rules when it comes to rebuilding this country. Buy American and hire American. Buy American. On trade, our trade deficit. Now nearly $800 billion a year. We have a deficit, think of it, of almost $800 billion a year. You always say, who's negotiating these deals? Is a chronic drag on the growth and a destroyer of jobs and wealth in our country. In the month of October alone, our nation racked up more than $40 billion in trade deficits. $40 billion, including more than a $30 billion trade deficit with China alone. All right? Think we're doing a good job in negotiating? I don't think so. How many business people do we have in this audience that could have done a slightly better job? Of the guy right? Yeah, you can. North Carolina has lost nearly half of its manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. America has lost 70,000 factories. Think of it, 70,000 factories since joining 
the World Trade Organization. Well, think of it. So China joins the World Trade Organization, and since that time, we've lost so much. 70,000 factories. We're living through the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. There's never been a job theft like what's happened to this country. And we stopped some of it a little bit because we just started. We haven't really started. It's going to really start until January 20th. But we're stopping. And one of the wealthiest men in the world, you saw it today, maybe. Did anybody see it? Masa. Right? Masa, great guy of Japan. He's pledged that he's going to put $50 billion into the United States because of our victory. He wasn't investing in our country. 50 billion, 50,000 jobs, 50,000 jobs he's going to be investing in. He's a great guy. A Trump administration will renegotiate our terrible trade deals, stand up to foreign cheating, and defeat every last American. And we will do this. We will defeat the enemy on jobs, and we will defend American jobs. We're going to defend American jobs. And we have to look at it almost as a war, because that's what's happened to us. That's what's happened to our workers. These are great people. And boy, did they come out to vote. Remember they said they don't exist? They existed. They existed. Believe me, in millions and millions of people poured out to the voting booths, and they voted bigly. That's why we had these kind of victories. We had states where we would win by 30 points, 35 points, 40 points. Amazing. And if a company wants to fire their workers, leave our country, and then ship their products back into our country, there will be consequences, I'm sorry. There will be consequences. Big consequences. On health care reform, every day, the law known as Obamacare is destabilizing our health care, really destabilizing it. Surging premiums and forcing providers out of the market. If we don't act, the damage will be irreversible. We're going to act. That is why we'll, we're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. We have no choice. We have no choice. We have absolutely no choice. So we're going to repeal and replace Obamacare, and you're going to get health care at a much lower price, with a much lower deductible. The duck, du you know, it's so high now, you can't, you really can't, and for the most part, you can't use it. But we are going to have great health care at a much lower price. On child care, I'm asking Congress to pass legislation to make safe and affordable child care accessible to all. And people like that. That's something that Ivanka Trump, did anybody ever hear of Ivanka Trump, right? Ivanka Trump has been fighting for for a long time, and I have, and I agree with her. On crime, the murder rate has experienced its largest increase in 45 years. We are going to support the incredible men and women of law enforcement, and we are going to bring this terrible crime wave to an end. Highest in 45 years, the murder. On immigration, we will be the administration that ended illegal immigration. We will construct a great border wall, dismantle the criminal cartels, liberate our communities from the epidemic of gang violence and drugs. We will get rid of the drugs that are pouring into our country. We will ask Congress to reform our visa and immigration programs to protect jobs and wages for American workers. And we will be appointing very shortly somebody to head up our program. And I will tell you, this person, like General Mattis, will do a phenomenal job because we're going to stop people from coming into our country illegally, but we're going to have people come into our country and they're going to come in by the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, but they're going to come in, they are going to come in legally, right? But by the hundreds of thousands. We want people to come in, but they have to come in legally. To protect our country from terrorism and extremism, 
We will suspend immigration from regions where it cannot be safely processed. Right now, thousands and thousands and thousands of people are pouring into our country. We have no idea who they are, where they come from, do they love us? In a lot of cases, no, they don't love us. A Trump administration will always put the safety and security of the American people first. Hey, remember that. Safety of the American people. Ethics reform will be a crucial part of our 100-day plan as well. We're going to drain the swamp of corruption in Washington, D.C. We're going to. I will impose a five-year ban on executive branch officials becoming lobbyists and a lifetime ban on officials becoming lobbyists for a foreign government. We face many, many challenges, but this is truly an exciting time to be alive in our country and hopefully to be alive in many other locations because we are representative to a large extent of what's happening in the world. The world is looking up to us, but they haven't been looking up to us much. And they are going to start looking up again. We're going to be good for the world, not just good for our country. The script to what we're doing is not yet written. Remember, this has been a great, great movement. The likes of which they've never seen before. The likes of which those folks back there that write the stories. No, no. No, I'll tell you. And they're saying it. They've never seen anything like this before. It's one of the great political phenomena of all time. And we're going to show them. We're going to do a great job. We're going to create a safe country. We're going to create a prosperous country. We're going to have jobs again, great jobs, not bad jobs, real jobs. And it's going to be something special. And hopefully they're going to write the truth. We do not know what the page tomorrow will read. But for the first time in a long time, what we do know is that the pages will be authored by each and every one in this room and in our country, by you. It will be authored by you. Together, we will raise incomes and create millions and millions of new jobs. It's going to happen. It's already happening. You see what happened today. We will reestablish the rule of law and defend the Constitution of the United States. And by the way, we will be appointing great, great Supreme Court justices, you see. We'll be starting very soon with one to replace Justice Scalia. Great man. We will protect the right of every American to live in safety and peace. We will restore and respect, and we will respect people's rights. We will respect constitutional rights. And for all America, we will respect our great American flag again. We will heal our divisions and unify our country. When Americans are unified, there is nothing we cannot do. Nothing. No task is too great, no dream too large, no goal beyond our reach. My message tonight is for all Americans from all parties, all beliefs, all walks of life. It's a message for everyone. No matter your age, your income, your background, I'm asking you to join us in this great, great, adventurous world that we're living in. We're going to make it less adventurous. We're going to make it safer and better than it's ever been before. I'm asking you to dream big again as Americans. I'm asking you to believe in yourself to believe in your country, and to believe in your future. So we've got a great future. What I've seen more than anything else is how great the future of our country is going to be. And if we do that, then all together, we will make America strong again, stronger than ever before. We will make America rich again. 
A lot of people don't like the sound of that, but we need that to take care of our military, to take care of our veterans, to take care of all of the things that we have to. We're going to be a rich nation again. We're going to be a wealthy nation again. We're going to make America. We're going to make America like it says in all of those caps, those millions and millions of caps that have been sold all over this country and all of those signs. We are going to make America great again, greater than ever before. Thank you, North Carolina. Thank you. We love you. God bless you, everybody. We'll be back soon. Thank you, North Carolina. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.